Welcome back, YouTube, to another YouTube. I guess it's not really a YouTube, but I guess a, a Python tutorial series. So um, this whole series is dedicated to how to get started with Python on Windows. Now, <laughs> it's kind of funny because people sometimes ask like, oh, Alex, why are you being so specific here? Why just Windows? So a lot of times when people get started with Python, they kind of think that it's going to be the same across the different operating systems. So, you know, Linux, Mac and Windows. And, you know, a lot of it, it is, you know, a lot of the process really is the same. But you're going to find that when you're using Python on different operating systems, sometimes there's features, sometimes there's libraries that are specific to certain operating systems. And then things like how you work with file paths, how you... Uh, basically go into the underlying code that is actually installed on your system, it's a little bit different. And so, again, it's going to be very similar, but there's also some finer caveats. So that's why really this series is, is more specific to uh, Windows. And so uh, that's, you know, really important. And basically kind of what's the whole purpose of this, right? So a lot of people reach out to me and they're always saying, hey, Alex, how do I get started with Python? You know, it's you know, where do I start and kind of what should I be doing and what should I be learning about and, you know, and stuff like that. And that's kind of a hard question to answer sometimes because a lot of it depends, well, are you going in with any kind of previous coding experience or are you completely new to coding? And if you're completely new to coding, it's not necessarily just writing some code and, you know, getting on your way. There's actually a lot more to it. There's going to be a lot of tools you're going to be using. And there's a lot of concepts that you're going to have to understand in order to really understand and be productive with Python. And so what I want to do is I want to show you some of those tools that are going to be useful for you when it comes to writing your code and your projects. Along with that, we will also have a specific project that we will work on together. So that way you can get exposure to writing code and how you should organize it, how you should document it and how you should test it. All of this is really important when you're new to coding and it can feel a little bit overwhelming and a lot of information that you have to digest. And what I found is if you kind of give that structured approach, it makes that process a little bit easier. Doesn't mean it's gonna necessarily be the easiest thing on the planet, but it makes it a little bit more easier to comprehend and then having that structure is important. So what are some of the tools that we're gonna be using in this series? Well, probably the first thing that we want you to get familiar with is something where you can write your code. There's many applications out there that you can use to write your code. In fact, you can even use an application like Notepad. You could use a text editor. I mean, you're really not limited. You just need something where you can write your code. However, what you're gonna find is that certain applications are gonna offer more features that make writing that code easier. One of those applications is called Visual Studio Code. This is not to be confused with Visual Studio IDE. So that is another application that Microsoft offers to developers. But with that one, it's a little bit heavier and it's designed to do different types of things. So you can do a lot of the same things that you do with Visual Studio Code, but you're gonna find that with Visual Studio IDE, you're really talking about some pretty big projects, things that we're gonna have to compile code, you're gonna have to do a lot of debugging and you need just kind of extra tools. So really Visual Studio Code is great if you want like a lightweight alternative. The other nice thing about Visual Studio Code is it's highly customizable. So you're gonna find there's extensions out there to do all sorts of things from anything from changing the color of Visual Studio Code all the way to connecting to databases to formatting code. There's a ton of extensions out there. And so that's why we've been kind of witnessing Visual Studio Code increase in popularity. It just is able to do a lot of different things. A lot of people kind of get it confused actually with another with Visual Studio IDE, but they're really two separate applications. And even though you can do a lot with Visual Studio Code through all these different types of extensions, you're gonna find that Visual Studio IDE just has a little bit more to it. So that's the first thing that we're gonna be doing is talking about Visual Studio Code and that kind of stuff. We're gonna also install Python, right? So we're gonna be teaching you how to code in Python. And one of the requirements is that you have Python installed on your system. Now on some operating systems like Mac, for example, 
Python is already installed. So you don't have to worry about it. You just kind of type in a few keywords and you're already good to go. However, on Windows, we have to actually install it ourselves. Now, I will kind of give you a little bit of a warning on this. Uh, it seems like Microsoft is starting to kind of incorporate Python into the operating system. So there's actually multiple ways to install Python on Windows. You can do it through the Windows App Store, so the Microsoft Store, or you can actually download, download it from the Python website if you so choose. We're gonna be doing it from, through the website. I will show you where it is on the Microsoft Store and I will kind of just explain some of the caveats when it comes to doing that. Okay, so the next tool that we're gonna be talking about is Git. So Git is a software for tracking changes in any set of files. Uh, usually we use Git uh, in order to kind of take snapshots of our code, right? And so that way, as you change your code and say some of those changes break your code, you can revert back to an earlier version of your code. So it's really nice because again, it's tracking your changes and it can be anything from adding a whole new file to literally putting in just a new line of code. So it's really good and it's a really important tool when you are starting to think about coding yourself. A lot of people, they kind of avoid Git when they start coding just because they don't really see the purpose of it and they don't understand the value of it. But when you really start getting on some big projects and you start getting on some code that's relatively complex, you're gonna immediately start realizing the benefits of Git. But the biggest thing is it allows us to track changes in our code where if something goes wrong, we can revert back to earlier versions. There's also another really important concept with Git. And that's this idea that you can have multiple people working on that same code. And how you do that is you basically take your main code and you do something called branching, which is basically in a sense like taking a copy of that code at that point in time. And then what you can do, so say for example, I take your code and I branch it, I can add a new feature to that code. And then what I can do is I can take that branch that's basically a copy of that original code with some adjustments, and then I can merge it or basically push it into that main branch or that main source code. So it's great for teams because if you think about it, you can have five or 10 different people all working on that same code, but they're working independently in their branches. And when we're, they're done adding that feature or taking away that feature, they can take those changes and they can merge them into that main code. So it's a really cool tool. We're gonna to talk more about it once we kind of get to that point where we have to start using it, but really important tool. And it is something that it's just, you kind of have to learn it if you're really gonna start being serious about programming. Okay, so the next tool that we're gonna be talking about, I guess I shouldn't call it a tool, it's really kind of a platform, but we're gonna be talking about GitHub. So GitHub, uh, has a lot of the same features of Git, but basically what we're doing with GitHub is it's an internet provider that is used for hosting software development and also uses the features or version control features of Git. So basically, I always like to say it's the online version of Git, but there's also this kind of like added feature where if I wanna share my code, it's really kind of got that social media aspect to it where people can search for my code and they can take copies of that code and then make changes to it and all sorts of different stuff. So it's really great. It's again, it's gotten really popular over the last, I don't know, 10 years. I guess it's been around 10 years now. It's probably been around a little bit longer than that, but it's a really popular platform. And again, it's kind of one of those things like once you start getting into the programming world, you're gonna find that pretty much everybody uses GitHub because people share their code. I, for example, I these YouTube videos, I share my code on GitHub because I know people go there to find other people's code and use it for their own purposes. So it's a great tool and we will talk a lot about GitHub and how to get started with that. Okay, now I did say at the beginning of this video that we are gonna be having our own project. Now, something about programming that is unfortunately a little bit challenging is in the beginning is finding a project that gets you exposure to different libraries and different concepts but then at the same time, isn't too complicated. And that's always difficult because it's really hard to gauge sometimes, especially when you're really new to programming, what is considered too hard and what's considered too easy. 
Because I don't want to give you a project where you're just not getting exposure to certain concepts, but I sure as heck don't want to give you a project that is way above your capabilities and it, you're just going to be confused out of your mind. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have a project that we're going to all do together and we're going to go through it line by line, file by file, and we're going to talk about the really important concepts. So let's talk about the overview of our projects. So congrats, you've started a new job and you've been tasked with creating a simple program that will do a couple of things for your trading team. We are finance oriented on this channel, so naturally we have to add something finance related to it. And so here is a list of the requirements for your new project. So there is a data source online that we need to scrape weekly. And so I already have that data source picked out when we get to that video or that portion of the series, I will talk a little bit about that data set. But basically we are going to take that data set and then uh, we're gonna be using Python to scrape it from a website, maybe even doing some downloading operations as well. And then once we have that data, we are then going to do some transformation processes. So Python is used heavily for ETL. ETL is short for extract, transform, and load. So it's all about data manipulation, data wrangling, and it's about taking data, cleaning it up, and making sure it looks the right way that we need it for our analysis. So that is a really important concept for a lot of data scientist roles, data analyst roles. And so we want to make sure we incorporate some ETL. So that's the second big thing is we're gonna have this data set and we're gonna clean it up. We're gonna also be saving our data locally. So we're gonna show you how to work with files inside of Python, save content to them somewhere on your local system. So your folders, or wherever they might be. And we're gonna show you how to work with different file types, anything from CSV to JSON files, maybe even text files and stuff like that. So we will talk about working with files and how we write and read to those files. It's a really important concept because you're gonna do it a lot. Okay, and then once we have saved and cleaned it, we will also be talking about how to send an email. So something, again, we all kind of work in that corporate environment or maybe we work on a team. You gotta notify people of things when they happen. And so we're gonna be using Python to help us send an email. We're gonna construct that email and then we're gonna send it to the recipients that are necessary. And then finally, anytime you write code, we wanna make sure we do a couple things. We wanna make sure our code is well documented. So things like doc strings and examples are ready to go. And then we wanna make sure it's tested. So we're gonna talk about unit testing and how we can incorporate that into our project. Oftentimes I find this a lot, which is when people are exposed to different Python tutorials, this is kind of skipped over. It's kind of just held off till the end, but it's a really important concept, especially if you ever plan to share your code with other people. If it's not well-documented, people won't use it. And if it's not tested, you're gonna get a lot of emails saying this feature doesn't work, that feature doesn't work. Trust me, I know I've been there. <laughs> so important concept and we wanna make sure I cover that as well. So that's our project in a nutshell. Okay, uh, during this entire process, okay, I am not gonna be going in with the intention that we're gonna always know the answer to our question. In fact, there's a lot of times we're gonna be writing some code and guess what? It's gonna return back an error or it's not gonna work as expected. A whole host of things can go wrong. That is programming. It's never gonna be necessarily this, you write it and it just works perfectly. Sometimes it will, most of the time it won't. And so when that situation arises, we have to be able to go find the answer to our problem. We're gonna have to get used to using different resources like Google, like Stack Overflow, like reading documentation of different libraries, understanding things like Quora, Reddit, these are all different resources in our toolbox that we can use to go get the answer to our problems when it comes to writing our code. Unfortunately, I do see this sometimes, which is people are trying to force themselves to know all the syntax all the time. And I just, it, to me, that's unrealistic because when you're talking about something as large as Python, it's... I don't remember all the syntax. I mean, one day I will, and then next day I won't. It's not about memorizing the syntax. Yes, syntax is important. And yes, you have to understand it to a certain extent. But to sit there and say, every time you write your program, you're gonna always know how to write it and you're never gonna encounter a bug. I think that's foolish and that's unrealistic. And so I wanna make sure that a big part of this whole series is putting that forefront and saying, hey, you're gonna encounter these issues. How do we go find the answers and how do we use these resources? Because if we don't know how to, it's gonna be really hard for us to be successful and grow as a programmer. So really important stuff. 
All righty, so that's our wonderful presentation. I'm gonna check how long we've been going. Okay, so I am gonna cut the video off here. In our next video, we are going to install Python on our operating system. So that's gonna be in our next video. At this point, if you do have any questions just about kind of the series or what to expect or just general questions overall, by all means, put them down in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. I get a bunch of comments on the video, so I cannot always answer every single one of them, but if I find like it might be appropriate to a bunch of different people, I wanna make sure I try to get those ones answered. So again, thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.